All right, guys, it was a boring day in the stock market today. You had the S&P 500. It was up about 0.4%. You had the NASDAQ down 0.2%. You had the Russell 2000 up 1.4% or 1.2%. VIX slightly higher, 0.5%. So I wouldn't say it was necessarily an exciting day for the market. You saw a little bit of a fluctuation between uh, the 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 large cap big tech plays going into the small cap plays. That's where all the action was that was in the small caps. You're seeing a four day rally unfold here so far in the small caps with the Russell 2000 stock symbol IWM. So today's video, we're going to go ahead and break down this market. We want to see what's going on with the individual um, sectors that are out there, what plays might be uh, coming into uh, uh, fruition in terms of opportunity that we can take advantage of. So we're going to do that. I'm also going to be going over your charts, your stocks, shoot them in the comments below. Make sure to uh, like and subscribe to this video if you're watching on YouTube and, and whatever else that you're watching it on, help support the channel so we can keep doing these things. But nonetheless, post your questions. I'll be happy to uh, take a look at all of them. I use a lot of charts, technical analysis on all of my answers. So with that being said, we're seeing that fluctuation between large caps and small caps where you're seeing the rotation out of tech into the small caps so far this week. Doesn't mean that that big tech is falling apart necessarily, but I wouldn't say it's putting together a real strong showing this week either. Small caps, on the other hand, much, much stronger so far uh, this week with one day left. Also, keep in mind, we got quarters end coming up. I don't expect anything real crazy to unfold between now and, and the close tomorrow. I would expect there to be some positioning. People are trying to do a little bit of window dressing into quarters end to make their 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 uh, stats maybe look a little bit better. And notice, too, we're, we'll go over some of the um, big tech plays here. Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, NVIDIA, Google, Microsoft, Tesla. These names, they're not showing as much. Um, gusto here in the last couple of days. They're showing a little bit, they're starting to languish a little bit. And you'll see that when we start looking at the different sectors that they represent. Finally, you had breadth positive today, two to one to the upside. That's good. That means two stocks were going up for every one stock that was going down. But what was more interesting is that despite the fact that you had seven out of 11 sectors trading higher, and that wasn't always the case, you really got a lot of, of strength in the last two hours of trading. But you, you had seven out of 11 sectors trading higher. It was led by financials and energy. You also had one that was trading flat. I think that was utilities and then an, a couple others that were trading down on the day. Then you had, when, when we talk about the big tech stocks, all those big tech companies that I just rattled off, six out of eight of those were trading lower. So I think you only had like, I don't know, you had like one or two of them. I think it was Apple and Tesla that was trading higher on the day. So it wasn't what you would call a strong performance from your um, big tech companies. And those are the ones that typically drive the market higher. You're not seeing that right now. You're seeing you're seeing those those names starting to languish just a little bit. So I apologize for some of this fidgeting here. I'm just trying to get things squared away. I had a little bit of technical difficulties before we got started here. All right. Well, with that being said, let's go ahead. Let's look at the charts here. Right. And remember. Be sure to be posting your charts or your questions down below if you guys have any. Be happy to go over your, your stocks. I go over all of them as long as you guys keep shooting them. So first off, SPY. Not necessarily what you would call an exciting bounce, but it's doing much of this without big tech helping it. So three days to the upside following this retest of a, a 432. That's a good little bounce there. But you're not seeing that, that real strong push higher like what you saw earlier this month where it was just gapping higher and running and really forcing the shorts to uh, cover their positions. Instead, it's just been very, very methodical, finally getting above that 10-day moving average. But when you look at the Qs, a little bit of a different story. For five straight days, we're testing this 10-day moving average and it can't seem to break above it. So that's a little bit of a problem. You do have some support here underneath at the 20-day moving average. That's this green line. But this orange 10-day moving average is causing it some some heartburn. It's not allowing it to break over. Now, it doesn't help either when the FANG stocks are not rallying to, to help the Qs. Nonetheless, that is something that we want to continue to pay attention to going into tomorrow. If it can break through that, I think you're probably looking at a retest of these highs that will go back to June 16th. That would be a move back up to the 372 area. Then you have IWM. 
And big hello to Kevin Hawthorne. Lakeland, Florida, man. He's like right down the road practically. Um, all right. So IWM, we talked about the spy not having as much gusto in its bounce. IWM is showing a little bit more gusto here. This is where it's it's breaking above that 200-day moving average, broke above all of its moving averages yesterday and today. That's the kind of move that you want to see more out of SPY and out of Qs. You're not getting that right now because all that capital is flowing into small caps. You haven't seen a lot of times this year. I mean, there's been times, but you just you don't see it regularly where the large caps and the, the big tech companies rally to, together. So you want the small caps and you want big tech rallying together usually it's one or the other or one just really lagging the other so now that we're getting this move yes i want to see it take out the previous highs i'm actually long on iwm it's been a good trade so far then it becomes a all right are we going to test this 190 191 area and then after that the ultimate goal would be around 196 that's where i would like to see it if it breaks through it that's great but that's my target if it if it pushes through it then i'll probably still have at least a third of a position to see if it can continue riding higher um, with that being said, let's look at the VIX. I type it in right. There we go. Still didn't type it in right, but it pulled it up nonetheless. You got this bullish wedge here. It's just continues to stay in. It doesn't really bounce much. Doesn't even try to challenge this upper upper end of this uh, decline trend line. But with it being end of month, would not surprise me if we go back into the 12s, test this 1270, 1280 area. It kind of almost seems like a foregone conclusion at this point. It just continues to get hammered on any kind of a pop. And the pops are getting less and less. Ultimately, one day, I do think that it's going to really blow up some portfolios, all these people that are short in volatility all the time. It did so in the beginning of 2018. I can remind you here one more time. This is what happens when things get kind of, well, look what I did before uh, 2020 when everything started shutting down. We were trading, what, around like 14s? And then we popped all the way up to 86. All right. That's pretty, pretty significant. But you know, you don't even need a economic shutdown for that kind of stuff to happen. I mean, look at look at this in 2018. We were trading at 11, 11.6. A week later, we're trading at 29. People blew up their account. They were even shutting down the ETNs that that were that were trading off of these things. So keep in mind on VIX, you don't want to be caught on the wrong side on that one. Now, let's go ahead and look at some of these sectors. Remember, you had GDP that came out today that created, you know, um, initially it created a sell off and it kind of put a damper on the whole market today. That's mainly because um, it came out a little bit hotter than expected. That creates a, a, a bigger likelihood that the Fed's going to raise rates at the next meeting. Right now, it's priced at 87%. So, pretty significant. Now, let's look at XLF. We're going to go through the sectors here. This is your strongest sector today, XLF. Rallied one point one and three quarters percent. Do I get excited about this? Not really, because I don't think the chart really looks that good on on the financials. I will probably change my tune. It breaks above this two hundred day moving average, which is that white line. If it can break above that, and it can break out of this uh, consolidation, which is tipping its hand slightly higher. You got some higher highs, higher lows. Okay, that's great, but it still kind of looks like a bear flag to me. But if it can break out of it, then you're starting to look at some opportunities for. <clears throat> excuse me, for some financial plays. Now, which ones would I be targeting on that one? JPM is probably the first one that comes to mind. This pretty good looking chart up three and a half percent today. It's probably um, got some more room to run. If the financials can break out, this would be your leader. You see on strong volume. That's another thing that we like to look for. We want to see strong volume accompanying a, a, a strong move. Off of the 50 day moving average. I think, yeah, you can, you can play this breakout here. Despite the you know the strong move out of JPM today, like at around 144 tomorrow, then that means a stop loss would probably want to be put around 137. Not a bad trade. Um, you're probably looking at a little bit less than five percent on the stop loss or so. Or if it consolidates some, which would be even better, then you can maybe take advantage of some of that consolidation to put a stop loss below that. Uh, but yeah, financials they look strong today. I just don't know if we're getting close to this breakout or not. I think if it breaks out, JPM may. Um, maybe out of out of uh, reach in terms of how much it's run at that point because i don't necessarily want to get long on a bank stock when financials is just doing this kind of stuff for what the last four months it's not really in in, in my best interest then you got 
materials. This was the second uh, strongest sector today. So materials, not a bad move. You got a, a push above this. You got the double bottom. We've been talking about that one for a while now. But you got this push above and out of this resistance. So there are some moves there to per, per, perhaps to be had with materials. Let's go ahead and look at some of those uh, stocks here on materials and see if we can't find something here worth playing. So I'm just going to go click on down here on the TC2000 that I use and just go through some of these charts. There's like uh, on XL, XLB, there's 29 charts. It won't take too long. You got CF. This is the, the biggest winner on the day. You could say that there's like a little bull flag pattern here that it's breaking out of. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't argue with someone if they said that it, it doesn't look bad. So I think CF is probably one that can be added to the watch list. Um, the one thing that I would probably say about CF versus like XLB, XLB was a little bit light on the volume today, slightly below average. I'd like to see that improve tomorrow if we get that follow through. Granted, it is also summertime. You're getting a lot of really low volume readings across the board. Um, so you have to keep that in mind as well. But CF really seemed light today on that breakout. So there's a potential that that breakout does not hold. You got MOS. This one's probably a little ways away from breaking out still, not one I would go chasing around. Sherwin-Williams. By the way, have you seen paint prices lately? Freaking ridiculous. I think a gallon's like $70 there for, for the exterior of my house. I didn't know paint could get that expensive, but... Um, sure, Williams, again, it, it's been on a pretty good tear from 222 to 260, goes up to the breakout level at 280, 268. That's going to be a hard one to chase without some kind of a cooling off period first because it's already overbought. You don't want to be doing it when it's extended, uh, extremely overbought. So, again, we're still trying to find something. I'd probably say CF is the best play so far. I mean, STLD could work. You can see where there's been a you know a temp right here. What was that back on 420? Uh, 420. Yeah, it couldn't break through it again here. Now it's getting close to it again. I'd say so far, CF, STLD, those are your um, CF is a agricultural play. STLD is a steel play. Back to that. Okay, PKG. Some of your some of your material plays can be really boring, but you want to make sure too that you're trading in the like right sectors because you take like gold for instance, not really something I want to go play in right now. That's just continues to drop each day. Packaging, uh, corp, no, don't see nothing there. Ball, something there. That we I think we highlighted this one not too long ago. Sixty one still has a ways to go though. Yep, this is probably more for like the people who really like the you know crazy action in their trades. <clears throat> starting to break out there, but it's going to be hard to, for some people they, that you might not mind putting a stop loss at six. Uh, it's really not bad. I don't know. I go back and forth on this one. I can see where there's a play there, but I just don't know if it's really worth it. Let's see what else we can find first. Oh, I, You know, you got some resistance there that you're going to want to keep a good eye on there. Essentially, it's just been trading in a sideways channel here for, goodness, since February, January, late January. So, um, really needs to break out of that. Manual, yeah, I'll, I'll check out. I'll check out Tilray here and uh, see what we're what we're dealing with there as well. Some consolidation with KR, uh, KRT. Not really seeing it. So. I'm, I'm not seeing anything that really stands out really exciting to me on the material so far. This looks actually uh, like a head and shoulders pattern right there. On ATR, you got the left shoulder head, right shoulder, no go right there. IP still probably in play. We highlighted that one in the last one. Ah. Yeah, right now. So I would say there's three that I would be focused on the most with material. CF, STLD, IP. Those would be the big, the big ones. Pack probably not too bad. It's six and a half percent though today. Yeah. All right. So going through these sectors, I know this isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but this is what trading is, man. You got a lot of people out there. They're going to hype it up and they're going to. It's all exciting and stuff. It's not. It's just a. It's very meticulous. It's a lot of uh, uh, repeated habits that that you're putting together and you're trying to make the best of it. Energy, I can get behind energy if it can break this decline and trend line. It's this thing has been very, very difficult to play in recent recent weeks, just all over the map. You got up, it's up four days in a row. 
I would not be surprised if it hits this 81 mark and it pulls right back again. So for now, I'm going to pass on it. XLI has been breaking out really well. I got into Honeywell. You might have remembered that one from a few weeks ago. Look at that move today. 2% to the upside, really breaking out. Looks really good. Buck the trend for a lot a lot of the time today. So I'm pretty excited about that. I pulled, I played this one on the breakout right here to 199.200. I, I still think XLI is a good place to be uh, trading in right now as well. And um, let's see if, let's pull, let's pull up some XLI charts here. Some stocks that are in XLI. Um, HII, probably one of your biggest ones. Let's go look at it by capitalization, shall we? All right. Biggest one, UPS. Mm. So you got this big gap right here on UPS. That's kind of attractive right there. But it needs to get, price needs to get out of this. This is just sideways noise right here. It's forming an inverse head and shoulders pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. But it needs to get above that. And then let's see here. RTX, no. Honeywell, yeah, I like that one. Uh, Caterpillar is not too bad. You got that bull flag pattern that's working. It's breaking out of it up every day this week so far. 231 probably would be the stop loss. It's a little bit steep on the stop loss side, so I'd probably pass on that. Uh, UMP, this is your railroad place. Not a bad look at all from it here. You got some resistance here that's formed right there. I don't know how hard that resistance is going to be. I might pass on actually formalizing that line. But you got a rising trend line here. So I think you can still play it off of this rising trend line. It it's, doesn't look too bad for, for stop loss wise. I think I would be putting my stop loss right below. It's at, trading at 204. So probably below 199. DE, if you can break through that resistance, that's great. Um, but you got a lot of them. I'm not going to go through 76 of them here, but just trying to give you guys some different ideas. ADP could still be in play, but it needs to break out. ITW, CSX. Yeah, CSX looks like it's pretty good. It's a healthy, healthy breakout so far, you know, up about 3% from when I talked about it on here. Um, look at this guy. Waste management. Everybody needs their trash picked up. But that that looks like a pretty good move that's unfolding there at around 170. And um, I think for me, I'd probably be putting my stop loss just below this consolidation here. Maybe actually a little bit lower. I'd probably go like one 164.40. Put it below 164.40. So, and I'm about to wrap up all the sector talk here. And I'll get to, uh, let's see, we got Tilray and we got Zoom. And I'll get to those here as well. But just wrapping up the rest of these sec uh, sectors here, and I'm not going to get into individual charts. Real estate, actually, I wanted to go into one. XLRE, this is your real estate sector. Got a basing pattern trying to break out. Check this out, though. Cold is one that looks really good. A member of the trading block pointed this out today. I really like it a lot. It's very close to breaking out. Um, right there. You got the right shoulder, you got the left shoulder, and you got the head. Looks pretty good. But then you got XLV. Yeah, it's um, still trading below that decline trend line. Needs to break out of that. If it does, look at Cigna, GH, both of those setting up nice. GH has a nice bull flag there. Can't seem to hold that bull flag breakout just yet, so keep that in mind. XLK, still languishing. I have Google, but I'm not looking really necessarily to, to add a lot more in the way of tech stocks until they can start moving again. Utilities trying to bounce off of uh, that, that 64 level like we've pinpointed before up today. And then you got XLC, which in order for this one, it's still strong. I mean, it's it's been doing pretty well, but it needs to get some participation out of Meta and it needs to get it out of Google. So Let's look at a couple of y'all's plays and then we can we can wrap this sucker up. Hopefully, hopefully going through the sectors and trying to show you a little bit of the logic behind the top-down trading setups gives you a little bit of a better understanding of how you pick and choose stocks. You want all the variables to be stacked in your favor so you have the best likelihood to succeed. So Tilray, man, I haven't looked at this one in a long time. Isn't that one of the uh, uh, pot plays, I think? Um, so... You look at Tilray, you look at stuff like CGC, and you got a lot of the same patterns. It, it almost reminds you of natural gas over the years, just how badly they've uh, gotten hit. And they they will pop every once in a while, give you hope, and then they'll just fall apart again. I tried trading them like a couple, maybe like a year or two ago. It did not give me much much of a return at all. I mean, I even tried to get into some from a long term standpoint, just did awful. But like CG CG uh, CGC. I mean, you would think something like this. I mean, this is a downtrend with very little pop going all the way back to February. 
it doesn't get anything. It just keeps going lower, and it kind of blows your mind a little bit. Till race, maybe you could say it's hung in there a little bit better, but I mean, it's it's fallen quite a bit. I mean, even just from December, where it was trading at the fives, now we're trading at a dollar sixty one. So it's it's really turned into a crappy uh, trade there. But I mean, you could say it's breaking this decline trend line here. I think to get excited about it, I would need to see it get into this gap. Maybe there would be some, uh, maybe a little bit of a vacuum there to suck price right back into that gap. But this is this is where really like the stop losses they come in. They're they're so handy. I mean, I can't stress them enough because one of these kinds of trades can really blow up account, really ruin it, and take out an entire position. I mean, if this is something you bought in the beginning of 2022 at around you know 890 you're looking at some severe losses like 75%. And that's really, that's really brutal. So um, watch till Ray around at this 20 day moving average. I don't know if it'll have much of a reaction there, but if I tried to find something positive about it, I mean, maybe there's a little bit of a basing pattern here trying to form and it's trying to break out of it, but there's not much. There's just nothing to get really excited about on it. Zoom. Let's look at Zoom here. This is comes from Lunar. All right, Lunar. Let's look at this one. So this resistance right here, we'll paint it purple or whatever. It's a it's a long ways from getting tested. So it, that's really not a concern to me at this point. At 78, if the stock moved from 67 to 78, that'd be great. But I think what's the bigger issue at hand here is this resistance right here that goes back to, to about the beginning of April. This resistance is pretty heavy. It needs to get through. It needs to get above that 200-day moving average in both cases, the 200 right here and here and here. It's pushed back some. You're also seeing, seeing some right there. And that's all in conjunction with this resistance level as well. So it needs to get above this resistance level. If it can get above it, I think there is that, okay, maybe it can go from you know, mid seventies all the way up to 78. But when it's stuck in this sideways range right there, there's not a lot to work with. So it's, for me, it's kind of a hard pass until that, that uh, can shape up some. So in any case, boring market, very low volume environment today was not something that, that I really enjoyed. Uh, I mean, I like the results of some of my trades that, that were going up. But like I said, I was, I was in Google trying to get the bounce out of that. That really didn't give me much uh, help today either so like to see google bounce and join honeywell iwm's been good but uh very low volume environment i think it's going to be even lighter tomorrow because we got the july 4th holiday so the markets are closed on tuesday monday's probably going to be atrocious from a volume standpoint because people are going to try to make it a four-day weekend so don't be surprised if you know monday uh is extremely low friday uh tomorrow is going to be low so i i don't have a lot of expectations for the market until people kind of get back until wednesday next week so uh you want me to look at apple we can look at apple here do i think it could get to 200 i mean it's right there i think it might have hit three trillion today I, I wasn't really following it too closely but rising trend line apple trend line is your friend until the end when there's a bend in the trend so if as long as it holds that trend line i'm I mean, I think it looks pretty good. I think you can play the bounces off of that trend line and uh, keep doing that. It's a very slow moving stock. I mean, uh, you got to have some patience with it. I mean, it hasn't tested this rising trend line since mid-May, but I mean, I think it's due for a pullback at some point. And then when it does, um, that might be where it goes up straight up to 200. So, all right, guys. I actually didn't show you guys the chart for that. Let me Let me show you guys the chart. This is the chart on Apple I was telling you about. This little rise in trend line off of the January lows needs to bounce off of that trend line. And I think uh, once it can do that, uh, $200, $200 could definitely come into play pretty quickly. Right now, it's extremely overbought. It's sitting at 94 on the daily, on the weekly, it's at 96. On the monthly, it's at 94. So pretty overbought conditions there to keep in mind. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe. Uh, click the join button down below if you want more of my market research each and every day. That's going to give you access to all my trading videos that I provide for members. That's going to be like updates on the big tech stocks, on the overall market. Plus, you're going to be getting uh, daily watch lists and updates on some of the uh, more intriguing trade setups that I come across. All right, guys, take care. God bless.